continue from before. The median is the middle number, but it's not just the medium medium number when it's all out of whack like this. You have to put it in numerical order from least to greatest. Smallest number is 22. Then we have another 22. Okay, then we have a 25. Mark them off every time. Then we have a 26. And then we have a 59. And by the way, you might consider that 59 to be what we call an outlier because that's kind of outside of the range of numbers we're looking at, kind of outside the, uh, uh, the normal here. Well, it's asking us the median, and the median is the middle number. Well, in this case, it's 25. Now, sometimes we have two numbers in the middle. We're going to get to one of those in a second, but in this case, the median is the exact middle number, and what you might want to do is, to find that middle number on a big data set, it's easier for you just to go from back and forth from side to side and mark them off, say, 1, 1, 2, 2, and what's left is 25. Now, it's easier to do with a small data set, but if you have a large data set, you need to, to mark off like that. And uh, that's the easiest way to do that. Number 11, Carla keeps track of the number of miles she runs each week. The number of miles she ran each week for the last six weeks is shown below. So one week she ran 9, 9, 8, 12, 7, and another 12. She wants the mean or the average number of miles she runs each week to be 10. So in other words, she wants to be able to add all of these up plus one more and get an average of 10. What is the number of miles she must run during the seventh week to exactly reach that goal? To exactly reach that goal. Well, it says in the seventh week. Well, we're going to have one more because we've got one here, two here, three here four here, five here, six here, and we're going to have one more. We're going to have something here. We don't know what this is yet. Okay, this is a big question mark. Okay, but she wants her average to be 10. Well, or our mean to be 10. Well, in order for that to be the case, we would normally add up all seven and get a number, which is X. We don't know what that number is yet. And get the mean, which is 10. And what this is saying is um, something divided by 7, x divided by 7, if you want to do it like this, equals 10. Okay. Now all we would do, we would do the opposite. We would get try to get x by itself here. And in order to do that, we would multiply both sides by 7. Those cross out, we're left with x equals 10 times 7, which is 70. Well, that works here, doesn't it? Well, I guess in order to reach the mean or the average of 10, we have to have a total of 70 miles run. Okay? We have to have a total of 70 miles run. We have to ask ourselves, how many do we have already? In order for us to do that, we know we're going to have to have 70 to reach an average mean of 10. We know we've got to have 70. What do we have so far? Well, we've got 9 plus 9 plus 8 plus 12 plus 7 plus another 12. And all those added up is 57. All right, and let's just do a double check of our math with a calculator. And that is 57. Well, if we've got 57 and we need 70, how many more do we need? And the answer is 13. We would say 57 plus x plus some unknown number equals 70. And we would subtract 57 from both sides to get rid of that and get the x by itself. And we would have 13. And how we can check that is simple. We would add up 9, 9, 8, 12, 7, 12 and 13, add them all up, divide by 7, which is the total number of data points we have, and we will get 10. Now, this is a multi-step problem, but this is something you're going to have to know how to do. The stem and leaf plot below shows the ages of the 15 players on a company softball team. 
And here, as we learned before, we've got 1, 18, 19, 19, 19, 19, 21, 21, 22, and so on. And we have a few down here, 30 and 33. The team's manager thinks that the mode is the most appropriate measure to describe the ages of the players. In other words, he's saying, well, most of these people are this age, and therefore that describes their overall averages. In other words, that's a good measure of central tendency. All right, and we can use central tendency. We can use median, which is the number in the middle. We can use mode, which is the number that occurs the most, as he's doing. Or we can use the average. We can add them all up and divide by the number of people we have. Which answer is most reasonable? And in this case, we might have to do a little figuring for all these. The mode represents the player's age as well. Well, maybe not, because you've got a wide range of ages, all the way from 18, which is pretty close to 19, all the way down to 33. All right. Well, you've got a bunch of different ages in here, and I don't think 19 really represents them well, because you've got a bunch at 19, but you've also got a bunch at 21, 22, 23, 24, and 27. The mode is too low to represent the player's ages. The mean or the median is the best choice. Well, this might be a viable option. The mean or the median might be the best way to represent it. The mode is too high. Well, the mode is obviously not too high because it's one of the lowest ages. We can get rid of that. Neither the mode, mean, or median represent the player's ages well. Okay, well, at some point, one of those ages, or excuse me, one of those figures has to be the best measure of t central tendency. They may not all be perfect, they may not all even be good, but usually there's one, or, or maybe even two, that's better than the other one. Which leads us back to choice B. Thirteen. Suppose two additional players join the softball team. One is 64 and the other one's 50. Which measure of central tendency will be the most effective? And we'll come back. Because this is such an intricate problem, we're going to do this one in class together. All right. So if you have questions about number 13, make sure you have those by the time we get back to class. Moving on to number 14. We're going on to box and whisker plots here. Below are the heights in millimeters of plant growth for a science project. So apparently they had a science project here. And um, some plants grew a lot, some plants grew a little, and so on. 32 millimeters, 36, 24, and so on. Which box and whisker plot accurately displays these data? Well, just about any time we're dealing with a set of data, we need to put those guys in order from least to greatest. The smallest number here is 24. So let's write that down. Next is 32, and we've got that twice. Next is 36. I got another 36. Then I've got a 38, and then I've got a 40. Well, a box and whisker plot tells us several things, but basically what it does is it tells us the lower 25% of the data, the upper 25% of the data, and the middle of the data. All right, and it basically paints a picture of that right here. Well, in order for us to draw a box and whisker plot, we have to have several pieces of information. First is the upper and lower extreme. Well, we have the lower extreme here at 24, which is the lowest number, and the upper extreme, which is 40. We also have the median, which in this case is the middle number, which is we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pieces of data. Since we have 7 pieces of data, that means anytime we have an odd number, or odd number of data, that means that we're going to have a true median, which is the, is the number in the exact middle. And if you want, you can learn the trick or use the trick I taught you earlier by marking them off. We got 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3, and we're left with 36. So this is the median. Now, we also need the lower and the upper quartile for a box and whisker plot. Now, the 
lower quartile is nothing more than the median, excuse me, the lower quartile is nothing more than the median of the first half of the data. Well, in this case, it is the median of this, which is 32. Again, we don't count the me uh, median um, in that second half of data, so your upper quartile in this case is going to be 38. And basically, we're going to have a box and whisker plot that looks somewhat like this. Now, on a normal scale, it wouldn't be this even because we have uh, different numbers, but the question is asking us which box and whisker plot accurately displays these data? Lower extreme, 24. Looks like we're good so far. Lower quartile, 32. That one looks good. Median, which is 36, which looks good. 38 is the upper quartile, which looks good. And then 40 is the upper extreme. Now, we could obviously, now this is the choice right here. Now, we could eliminate choice C right off the bat because it shows the lower extreme being 28. And we know our lower extreme is 24, so we can get rid of that one. Both of them, or all of them, have an upper extreme of 40. So those might all be viable options. And they all have a median of 36. All right, but where these are wrong is the lower quartile here, for example, is 30. And that's not the case. It's 32. This one's 32, but that's still not the right choice because 38. And we already eliminated that one anyway because the lower extreme was 28. And then, of course, we have 34, 36. And it looks like 37, which is no way representative of what we have here, so we can eliminate this choice too. So remember, we need the lower extreme, which is the lowest number, the upper extreme, the median, and sometimes you can pick out your box and whisker plot just on that because some of the other data is so messed up. Then we have the lower, ex or lower quartile, which again is the median of the first half of the data, and the upper quartile, which is the median of the second half of the data. The box and whisker plot shown, or the box and whisker plot shows the ages of the participants in a park cleanup. What is the median age of the participants? Well, in our box and whisker plot, our median is always this number that's inside this box here, which is 32. Second question, number 16, what is the upper quartile of the data? Well, remember, the upper quartile is the median of the second half of the data. And that is represented by this second part of the box right here. And that looks like it's right in the middle of 36 and 40. And that makes that 38. Seventeen and eighteen. Let me just make a statement about this box and whisker plot. What they're trying to make you understand is that 25% or one quarter of the data falls in this range right here. Another 25% falls right here. Another 25% falls between 15 and, and uh, or sorry, 12 and 15. And another 25% falls between um, 15 and 21. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four quarters of the data. Okay. Now, having said that, let's try to answer our question. What is the range of the data? Well, the range, as we remember, is nothing more than the difference between the lowest number and the highest number. The range is just the overall range of all the data. Well, in this case, it's basically the difference between 21 and 3. The best way to find that out is say 21 minus 3, which is 18, which is C. Now, which statement is not true? Remember what I said about 25%, 25%, 25%, and 25%. A, approximately, and this is one of those problems where you've got to basically work out all four choices. So it's basically like having four or five problems here in one. Approximately 25%, approximately 25% of the club's members ran six or fewer miles last week six or fewer now that's true but remember we're looking for not true so we can eliminate choice a b approximately 50 percent of the club's members ran between 
6 and 15 miles, between 6 and 15 miles. Well, we got 25% here, 25% here. That makes 50% of the data is between these two lines right here. That would make that true. Therefore, that would not be a choice because remember, we're looking for what's not true. Approximately 75% of the club's members ran 15 or more miles last week. 15 or more. Well, remember, this is only 25% of the data, not 75. So it looks like that might be a good choice, but let's go ahead and take a look at D anyway. One or more of the members of the club ran 21 miles last week. Well, one or more, you know, we don't know that for sure. So it's choice C.